Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, my group and I will present about the segmental reporting of our company, which is Pemat Berhad. My name is Nur Isha Nabiha, and I will introduce to you our company background. Pemat Berhad is incorporated in Malaysia in November 2018. We are engaged in operation of retail, wholesale, and other units, as well as e-commerce located in Malaysia. Pemat Berhad is a company list on Bursa Malaysia's main board with an annual turnover of RM2 billion. In 2019, we began our first e-commerce initiative by creating Pemat.com and for leveraging our physical stores, Pemat.com launched its site to store service, enabling the customers to make a purchase online and pick up the order in stores. We earn the trust of our customers every day by providing a broad assortment of quality goods and services at everyday low price EDLP. EDLP is our pricing philosophy under which we price items at a low price every day so our customers trust that our price will not change under frequent promotional activity. Each week, we serve over 50 million customers who visit approximately 500 stores and our e-commerce website under 13 banners in 13 states. We choose the name Fame for our company's name because it brings the means of being known or talked about by many people. We hope that our company will stand by its name and one day will become globally famous. Our vision is to be an independent, innovative, harness and sustainable cooperative in which customers are able to choose from a wide range of goods and services at one place and at a reasonable price. And our company's mission is to help people around the world save time and money at any time and anywhere by providing the opportunity to shop in retail stores and through e-commerce. Our company's subsidiary is the first one is Fimart Marketing Berhad, which is engaged in giving rent to other small or big retailers. The second one is Fimart Query and Premix, which is engaged in the sale of related products. And the third one is Fimart Manufacturing Berhad, which is engaged to produce our own goods that consists of foods and beverage. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mimi Carmila Binti Anwar and I am going to explain on factors to consider having a segment reporting. Number one, nature of products or services, which is sales of goods. Revenue is recognized when the goods are accepted by the customers at the stores of the company. Number two, property management services. Revenue is recognized on a straight line basis over the term of the lease. And lastly, customers' loyalty program. It allows customers to accumulate points and these points are redeemable for gift vouchers. Thus, when the points and rebates are either it was redeemed or not redeemed by customers, the amount will be recognized as revenue. Number two, nature of production process. This company involves with operation of a retail chain of departmental stores, supermarkets, and pharmacies, which sell a broad range of merchandise from clothing, food, household products, and other merchandise. This company also provides the operation of an echo department store or supermarket, which is complement by shopping malls operations. The company operates standalone neighborhood supermarket as well as department stores and supermarkets as anchor tenants in third party malls. Besides that, Fremart also provides property management services. The company rents its mall space to other retailers. Number three, type of class of customers. Type of class customers of Fainmite consists of number one, customer from middle and upper income group and credit customer, which is below 30 years old age and has monthly income less than 3,000 ringgit. Number four, method used to distribute products or services. Method used by Fainmite to distribute its products and services are through online and 
offline shopping in one integrated platform. The company offer a complete offline to online retail ecosystem. And lastly, number five, the nature of regulatory environment. To achieve the company's objectives on, of becoming Malaysia's most preferred retailer, Fremart recognizes the importance of gaining and keeping stakeholder trust and confidence. The company addressed to the Fluid Act 1983, Food Hygiene Regulations 2009, Trade Description Act 2011, and Malaysia Standard on Halal Food to ensure that its services and facilities satisfy the expectations of its consumers. There are four types of segment in this report. Number one, retailing segment. The operation of a chain of departmental stores and supermarkets selling a broad range of goods ranging from clothing, food, household goods, and other merchandise. Number two, property management services. It is a shopping mall operation. Under property management services business, Fremart leases its small space to other retail brands and generates monthly rentals. It also undertakes facility management and related services. In this statement, it also derives revenue from temporary rental of space for events, seasonal promotions, revenues from car parks within its properties, assets and more. Number three, discount store business. The first point is, sells a different type of products under one roof. Fremite sells from day-to-day -day use to rarely purchase items such as electronics. Second, products are sold at discount prices. Products can be purchased at significantly lower prices than the standard prices of the products. And the third one is products are sold in a huge volume into several categories from stationery to food items. There are numerous brands of the same type of product being sold in the fame mart. Number four, financial service business. Financial service provided when a payment system provider receives and transfer payments between payers and recipients. They might provide credit and debit cards, checks, and electronic funds transfer. Shift of decision making, CODM, and its responsibility. Before I explain on the responsibilities of CODM, I will explain what is actually the CODM. Shift of decision makers is a function that allocate resources to and assess the performance of the operating segments. It may be an individual or group of individuals. For example, it may be the chief executive officer, the chief operating officer, the senior management team or board of directors. In this case, the CODM of FEMAI are managing director and board of directors. The board of directors in this company consists of independent non-executive chairman, managing director, executive director, independent non-executive directors, and non-independent non-executive directors. The responsibles of CODMs are to evaluate the performance of different segments. Second, to allocate resources to the segments, identifying the nature of the business as a service, and to determine the existence of managers accountable for business activities. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Rahim Binti Abdul Rashid, and I will present on the 10% threshold test. Fame might perhaps have six segments which includes supermarket business, discount store business, property management service, financial service business, health and wellness, and also shopping center business. Not all six segments is considered reportable. There are two ways to identify reportable and non-reportable segments. 
Firstly, we will use 10% threshold debt, which include revenue, profit loss, and also asset. As for revenue, must be at least 10% of, to of total revenue of all operating segment. Profit or loss, at least 10% of total profit or loss of all operating segment. Asset will be at least 10% of combined total asset of all operating segment. By using 10% threshold test on all the total revenue of all operating segment, only four is reportable, which is supermarket business, discount store business, property management service, and financial service business. As for supermarket business segment is 33%, for discount store business is 29%, property management service and financial service business is both 16%. As for not reportable segment that include health and wellness and shopping center business, each is 2 and 4%. If the operating segment does not meet the 10% threshold test, it will not be qualified to separately disclose in the financial statement and must be combined together and disclosed as all other statement category. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Aisham Hakiha. Second, the process to identify the reportable statement is by using 75% of the revenue. Combined as the revenue of identified property segments must be at least 75% of total external revenue. The combined the revenue of the chosen operating segments is more than 75%, which indicates that there is no need to identify more operating segments, which fill the 10% test to be included as the reportable segment. Only for segments, that is, supermarket business, discount store business, property management service, and financial service business is considered reportable. From the calculation, the result of 94%, which is more than 79%. Therefore, the choose the reportable segments earlier will remain as the reportable segment, and there is no need to identify additional reportable segments. In the case where it is not able to achieve at least 75%, the first should identify more reportable operating segments, even if the segment fails the 10% threshold test. The advantage of doing segmental reporting is the first one is better understanding. It gives a better understanding to the performance of the company as the users can successfully evaluate the information about the company's various segments. The second one is value creation. It increases the company's profitability by achieving growth in sales from the various segments and creates sustainable value for the stakeholders. The third advantage of doing segmental reporting because it is useful for decision making. The segmental reporting will provide useful information for the investors and creditors so that they can make proper investment decisions. And the last advantage is the risk and return assessment. The lenders and investors can assess the risk and returns of the company to analyze information relating to the segments associated with an investment or lending alternative. Next, I will present about the disadvantage of doing segmental reporting. The first one is intense competition. It will lead to competitive damage of the company as the confidential information about the profitability of the company will be revealed to the competitors. The second one is reliability problems. Information may be unreliable because the difficulties in defining the segments by the users. The third disadvantage is will incur high cost. The company may incur higher costs in providing the segments information to the external users. And the fourth disadvantage is high pressures. Higher pressure of the management in preparing the information of all the segments to ensure the information is useful for the users. Next, Interim Report MFRS 134. Interim Report are divided into two in the basis preparation. First, Integral Method and Discrete Method. In the Integral Method, the interim report is part and parcel of the larger annual financial reporting cycle. 
The function of Intel reporting is predominantly to predict and explain the financial information for the full financial year. While in the discrete method, interim period should be treated as an accounting period distinct from the annual cycle. Interim reports are intended to predict and explain the financial position and financial performance for the discrete period. These are the examples of the interim report basis preparation. A company incurs all its rental expenses in the first quarter of financial year, but none in the subsequent three quarters of the financial year. In the discrete method, the rental expenses shall be recognized as an expense when incurred. The entire rental expenses will be charged out as an expense in measuring the first quarter interior results, but none in the subsequent three quarters. While in the integral method, the rental expenses incurred in the first quarter of the year shall be allocated relatively between the four quarters of the financial year. Only the portion of the total rental expenses attributable to the first quarter is charged as an expense, while the balance of the incurred expenses is deferred and allocated to the subsequent three quarters. Hi, my name is Nur Ishana Biha and I will present about the accounting policies used by Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad in his interim reporting. I choose two, which is MFRS 5, non-current assets, help for sale, and MFRS 138, intangible asset. For the non-current asset held for sale, it is classified as, as asset held for sale if their carrying amount will be recovered principally through a sale transaction rather than through continuing use and a sale is considered highly probable. It is stated at the lower of carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell except for assets such as deferred tax assets, assets arising from employee benefits, financial assets, and investment property that are carried at fair value and contractual rights under insurance contract, which are specifically exempt from this requirement. Its impairment loss is recognized for any initial or subsequent write-down of the asset to fair value less cost to sell. The gain is recognized for any subsequent increases in fair value less cost to sell of an asset but the gain or loss that are not previously recognized by the date of the sale of the non-current asset is recognized of the date of the recognition. The NCA held for sale is not depreciated or amortized. Its profit and other expenses attributable to the liabilities of a disposal group classified as held for sale continue to be recognized. The assets of a disposal group classified as held for sale are presented separately from the other assets in the statement of financial position, while the liabilities of a disposal group classified as held for sale are presented separately from other liabilities in the statement of financial position. Next, discontinued operation which is under NCA held for sale is a component of the entity that has been disposed of or is to be distributed to the shareholders or is classified as held for sale and that represents a separate major line of business and geographical area of operations. The results of discontinued operation are presented separately in the income statements, statements of changes in equity and statements of cash flow. Next, I will present the second accounting policies used by BIMB Berhad, which is MFRS 138 Intangible Assets. Intangible assets have been in useful lives and is measured at cost less any accumulated amortization and any accumulated impairment loss. The costs associated with maintaining computer software program are recognized as an expenses as incurred while the development costs that are directly attributable to the design and testing of identifiable and unique software products controlled by the group are recognized as intangible assets. This subsequent expenditure is capitalized only when it increases the future economic benefits embodied in the specific asset to which it relates. All other expenditure is recognized in profit or loss as incurred. For amortization of intangible assets, it is amortized from the date that they are available for use. It is based on cost of an asset less its residual value. 
It is recognized in profit or loss on a straight line basis over the estimated useful life of intangible asset. Below is the table of amortization method used, which is straight line method. Type of reports prepared by the company. There are three types of interim report, which are semi-annually for every two months, quarterly for every three months, and bi-monthly. Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad, BIMB, prepares quarterly interim reports. This interim report summary of unaudited condensed consolidated financial statements, such as statements of financial position, statement of profit or loss, statement of other comprehensive income, statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity, statement of cash flows that issued by the IMB every three months, which is quarterly. As for the period for the current and comparative of each statement prepared by Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad. Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad is prepared using quarterly basis for the year ended 31st December 2021 each year. The current and comparative period for each statement of the company according to MFRS 134 interim reporting will be measured from 1 January 2021 to 30 June 2021 that equivalent to second interim quarter. Firstly, for the profit or loss and other compressive income for the current period of group and company year to date will start on 1 January to 30 June 2021 that consists of 6 months. As for the interim period for group and company will be end every three months that start on 1 April until 30 June 2021. The period for comparative group and company of comparable year to date start on 1 January until 30 June 2020 of 6 months. As for comparable interim period will start on 1 April up to 30 June 2020. For the financial position for end of interim period for both group and company and every 30 June 2021, that is 6 months. And as for the comparative group and company end of preceding financial year every 31st December 2020, which is 12 months. As for the cash flow, current group and company interim period start on 1st January until 30 June 2021, that is 6 months. As for the comparative group and company comparable interim period is 6 months, which is start on 1st January up to 30 June 2020. Lastly, for the changes in equity, the interim period for current group and company is 6 months, that start on every 1 January up to 30 June 2021. As for the comparable interim period of comparative group and company start on 1st January to 30 June 2020, which consists 6 months. There are two adjustments that, are, that have been made in the interim report. BIMB Holdings Berhad prepares its quarterly financial statements in accordance with MFRS 134 interim reporting and its financial year ends on 31st December. For the first adjustment related to the property and equipment, on 1st January 2020, BIMB Holdings Berhad's property and equipment is costing 381,000 ringgit with its accumulated depreciation as at 1st January 2020 amounting to 140,000 ringgit. The company depreciates all of its property and equipment on a straight line basis at 10% per annum on a yearly basis and none in the year of disposal. On 1st June 2020, BIMB Holdings Berhad decided to dispose one of its furniture with a carrying amount of 100,000 ringgit for a profit of 50,000 ringgit. 
the furniture was initially purchased by the company at a cost of 120,000 ringgit. For the carrying amount as at 1st of 2020, the total is 186,125 ringgit. These are result from the total cost less total accumulated depreciation. For the second adjustment related to the intangible asset, BIMB Holdings Per Heart has recognized 5 million ringgit of research costs as an intangible asset during the year. The intangible asset value as at 31st December 2020 was 191 million 187,000 ringgit. The balance carried out as at 31st December 2020 after the adjustment is 185 million 987,000 ringgit. Before adjustment, in the statement of financial position for the year ended 31st December 2020, the value of PIMB holding per high property and equipment is 381,000 ringgit, while the intangible asset is 191,187,000 ringgit. After the adjustment, in the statement of financial position for the year ended 31st December 2020, under non current assets, the value of PIMB holdings per heart property and equipment is 186,125 ringgit, while the intangible asset is 185,187,000 ringgit. 